a Professor Torah production. Hear ye, hear ye! The king hereby invites all the inhabitants of the city of Shushan to a royal feast to be held at the king's royal palace. Hear ye, hear ye! That foolish king, king Ahasuerus, always raising our taxes. It's about time he did something right with our money. A royal feast at the royal palace? I can hardly wait to taste the food! Who cares about the food? As long as there's something to drink. Most of the inhabitants of Shushan were eagerly preparing for the king's royal banquet. Most, with the exception of Mordechai HaYehudi, who was the teacher and respected leader of the Jewish people. And now, Talmidim, the Pusik can be understood. All right, Musa Seder. Menachem. Yes, Rabbi. I like that question you brought up in today's lesson. It shows you're really applying yourself to your studies. Wait, what's that announcement? I was afraid something like this was going to happen. Our people must realize the great danger this banquet presents to us. Menachem, I need a favor. Quickly, hang up signs throughout the Jewish section that I will address a vital meeting tonight at the city shul. Meanwhile, I'll discuss with the other sages of the city what must be done. Quiet! Quiet! Those in back, please keep quiet! Raboisai, please let Ramonachai speak! My brothers and sisters, please take heed to what I have to say. The king's royal banquet places us in a very grave situation. The feast poses a threat not only to us, but to the entire Jewish nation. The king knows that Hashem will always protect us in our times of danger. He knows quite well that the only method by which they can harm us is by causing us to sin. One can easily imagine the conversation that must have taken place between the king and his close advisor, Haman before announcing the banquet. A toast to His Excellency, an everlasting ruler. <laughs> Haman, you seem quite confident, but I'm still uncertain. Every night that prophecy haunts me in my sleep. The Jewish prophet Yirmiya said their holy temple would be destroyed, but that at the end of 70 years, it would be rebuilt. When Jerusalem is rebuilt, my kingdom falls. His Excellency demonstrates great acting ability, but his fears are groundless. According to my calculations, the 70 years finish this very year. As you can clearly see, Yirmiya was wrong. The temple is not rebuilt. The temple will never be rebuilt. You will rule forever. A toast to His Excellency, a ruler forever. But, but, but Haman, D don't you remember what happened to my father-in-law, King Belshazzar? He too thought the 70 years were concluded, and the Jewish god had abandoned his nation. In order to celebrate, he made a wild party, using the sacred vessels of the Jews' holy temple. By morning, he was dead. Yes, your brilliancy. King Belshazzar did miscalculate his calculation. He began counting the 70 years from the rise of King Nebuchadnezzar of Bovel to the throne. He should have begun counting from the exile of the Jewish King Yechania nine years later. 
But now that 70 years have passed from Yechania's exile, and the temple is not rebuilt, his majesty's position is secure. Follow my calculations? Well, uh, 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 yes, of course. I guess I was just being overcautious. This calls for a great celebration. I hereby pronounce on this occasion a happy event. A feast, a feast fit for a king. A 180 day feast. <laughs> I don't know, I'm still scared. The Jewish God is very powerful. He destroyed kings before me. How do I know I'm not next? Your genius in C. I'll tell you the secret of their powers, and then you can decide for yourself. When they do the will of their God, they are indestructible. But when they sin, their God forsakes them. And then they are in our hands. <laughs> but how can we make them sin? Especially if I'm going to be busy with the feast for the next half a year. That's exactly it, your majesty. What's it? The feast will cater to this plan. What plan? What are you talking about? You're marvelous in sea. Don't you see? The feast will be cunningly designed to make the Jews fall prey to sin. We'll have them enjoy the finest non-kosher cuisine from around the world. With enough wine to go around, we can be certain that the Jews will sin enough to deserve complete and total destruction. <laughs> Therefore, I see no alternative. Under no circumstances can we attend the king's banquet. Hey, hey, Mordechai, it's people like you who are causing all the anti-Semitism in this country. Persia is a haven for us Jews, and if we want to keep it that way, we'd better go to the feast to show that we're good loyal citizens of the kingdom. Right on, Shaul. Shaul, if you're so interested in showing your loyalty to human king of flesh and blood, what then of the loyalty you owe to Hashem? Come on, Mordechai. I don't know why you're making such a big fuss over nothing. So we're going to a party to eat and have a few drinks. We have to go along with the government if we want to continue living here happily. If the king gets angry, we'll have no place to escape to. We'll all be killed. I don't care what you say, we must go to the party! The banquet for all the inhabitants of Shushan was soon underway. Though some heeded Mordechai's warning and refused to attend, many Jews did attend the king's royal feast. At the palace, Haman was appointed to supervise the banquet and was busily instructing his servants how to best carry out his wicked plans. Do you remember all of your instructions? The purpose of this feast is to tempt the Jews to sin. But remember, you cannot force them to eat non-kosher food. They will only be held responsible for their actions if done with free will. Give them whatever they want. When their resistance is low, they will be like butter in our hands. And then we can finish off the Jews once and for all. Ah, I see another couple of Jews have just stepped in. Please, take care of them. <laughs> Certainly, Master. I'll tend to them immediately. Sure. Uh, I, I don't think we did the right thing in coming here. Uh, I think I should have listened to Mordechai uh, and stayed home. Come on, Nati. There's nothing to be afraid of. Just relax. Let's pull up some chairs and be seated right over here, right next to this table. I guess you're right. You know, this place is the most beautiful place I ever saw in my life. There's gold and silver everywhere. Wow, just look at the expensive draperies and marble floors. It's unbelievable. Boy, if this is what we show him get in this world, 
Imagine what's in store for Tzadikim like Mordechai in Olam Haba. Wait, what do you mean Tzadikim like Mordechai? You should say Tzadikim like me. You think I'm at this party to enjoy myself and have a good time? Absolutely not. I'm doing it all for the sake of Hashem. Hey, here comes the waiter. Excuse me, gentlemen. Are you gentlemen ready to order? Hey, what have you got? We've got Portuguese pig, Scandinavian snails, rhinoceros bits and elephant tails, Californian clams and Syrian snake, freeze-dried ants and cockroach cake. Alaskan, that's okay. I've lost my appetite. Hey, hey, and besides, I can't eat that because I am a Jew and I grew up on Torah and Mitzvot. Perhaps you'd like something to drink. What's your specialty? Expensive old wine. I want expensive new wine. You could give the old wine to somebody else. Old wine tastes much better than new wine. Hmm. Uh, how old is the wine you got? At this party, everyone is served wine older than himself. How old are you, sir? I'm 68. Uh, so, you always told me you're 35. Ooh. Uh, Hey, Shell, why did you kick me in the ankle? Hey, hey, hey. everyone uh, is always making mistakes about my age. I just look so young because I exercise. All right, I'll be back shortly with your order. Nuti, you stay here while I walk around this place a little bit. Just sit back and relax. Uh, okay, Shell, uh, hurry back. Uh, hum -de -dum -dum -dum. Da -da -dum. Ah, uh, uh, this banquet is really nice. Hey, Jew. Uh, who, who, who are you? Why did you just put on my table? My name is Shika, and I want to give you a little present. A little cup of wine. A little cup of wine? It's so big, I could drown in it. This cup is called a puska. It doesn't look like a pushka to me. Puska, not pushka. And where I come from, you drink it when somebody gives it to you. Now drink it. And what if I don't want to drink it? You're forced to drink it till the last drop. Till who drops? Until you drop. Now open up your mouth a little bit. So I can just pick it up and I can pour it in your throat and just... Uh, uh, Hey, Nuti, don't worry, I'm coming. What in Shushan is going on here? Shika, how many times do I have to tell you no puskas at this party? You drink what you want. Sorry, boss. I guess I got a little carried away. You should be sorry. Now go away, you bad boy. <laughs> Thank you, mister. Hey, it's you, the wicked Haman. Why, Nuti? That's no way to speak to Haman. He's one of the king's top advisors. With his funny three-cornered hat, I hope he doesn't advise him how to dress. I'm getting out of this crazy place. Mordechai was right all along. We shouldn't go to this party. Wait, Nuti, don't. Come back, come back. Looks like your friend has left. I hope you are enjoying the feast. Could your god give you such a good feast in the world to come? Our Navi said, I in loy rasa, Eloi kemzula secha. All of my buzz better than anything in this whole world. And if I go up to heaven and I see it's no better than what you have at this banquet, I'll complain. This is all of my buzz. I've already got the same thing by Achesh palace. <laughs> <laughs> You know something? You're a real swell guy, Haman. I hope the king will appoint you to be prime minister someday. I hope so, too. <laughs> The seventh day of the feast fell out on Shabbos. The Jews stayed away in order not to desecrate the holy day. On Shabbos, in old Jewish homes, Shabbos Neros shine brightly, and sounds of Zmiros ring in the air. After enjoying their Shabbos Suda, the members of each household begin discussing Divrei Torah. 
However, in the king's palace, a completely different scene transpired. Yes, they too were eating and drinking, but their discussion was of a different sort. A drunken argument began. You're absolutely wrong. You just don't understand the point I am trying to make. I disagree. There's no doubt about it. The people of Modai are definitely more superior in every way. No, no. You don't realize what you're up against. The Persians can't win over the Medes without the slightest effort. You're making a terrible mistake. Well, you're wrong. That's the most ridiculous thing I have ever you're heard in my crook. entire life. Let me make myself perfectly you're clear. A crook. I am not a crook. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, please. <laughs> We have been debating, deba de debating this vital topic for over three hours. Uh, I believe that as king, I should make the final decision. It's not the Persians nor the Medes who possess the most beauty in the kingdom. My queen Vashti is neither a Mede nor a Persian and is far more beautiful than anyone else. I'll prove it to you. Guards! Guards! We are here. Do -do. The will of the king! Bring me Vashti, wearing the royal crown! Meanwhile, in the chambers of the queen... <laughs> Leia! Boil a cup of tea for me at once! Yes, Your Majesty. A maid should always have a smile on her face while serving her mistress. Yes, Your Majesty. Leia, did you tend the garden today as I instructed? No, Your Majesty. I haven't been able to take care of it yet. I hope to tend it first thing tomorrow morning. What do you mean? You didn't do it yet? Don't give me your excuses. I know why you didn't work today. Because it's your holy Sabbath, and you didn't want to work on Sabbath. Tell me! Ow! That's the real reason, isn't it? Please let me go. I thought your majesty didn't need the work done until tomorrow. Don't you lie to me! I know why you transgressed my command. You really want to keep your Sabbath, don't you? But it won't work. My grandfather, the Nebuchadnezzar, destroyed your holy temple, and I will prevent it from ever being rebuilt. <laughs> You see these water basins? They were taken from your holy temple. Your God is no longer with you. If he still has any power, why doesn't he stand up and avenge his honor? Your majesty yourself demonstrates the greatness of my God. If Hashem allows such wicked people as yourself to continue living, it's the biggest proof of his greatness. Hashem is in no rush. He rules over the whole world, and there is no place you can hide from him. Don't worry. You won't go unpunished for long. Hashem has seen all the suffering and embarrassment you have caused to all Jewish girls. Ow! You filthy Jewess! <laughs> you will be punished dearly for your foolish remarks. <laughs> what is it now? Queen Vashti, the king formally requests Her Majesty's royal participation to show herself to all the officials wearing the royal crown. <laughs> Quiet! I'll deal with you later. Go into the back room. Hmm. What an honor. A chance to show off my greatness. <laughs> I'll be with you in a moment. Just one last look in the mirror. Hmm. Marvelous. <laughs> Wait. Hi. What's happening? Pimples. Pimples are growing out of me. All over my skin. Oh, I look so ugly. What could be more embarrassing than that? What's this? An ugly tail is growing out of me too! Oh no! The king is waiting. Oh, I can never appear this way before all those people. Why, I'd be the laughing stock of the entire kingdom. Guards! Guards! Go tell your stupid master that in the house of my father, King Belshazzar, he wouldn't have been good enough to clean the horse's stables. My father could drink enough wine for a thousand men and wouldn't get drunk. Akashverosh has just a few drinks and becomes completely crazy. I refuse to obey his insane command. Tell the king I will not come. The guards hastened to return to the king with the wicked Queen Vashti's reply. 
Your Majesty. The Queen refuses to come. How dare she? What did she say? Well, first she said, what is it now? All right, but get to the point. She said, go tell your stupid master that in the house of my father, King Belshazzar... He wouldn't have been good enough to clean the horse's stables. My father could drink enough wine for a thousand men and wouldn't get drunk, but Ahasuerus has just a few drinks and becomes completely crazy. I refuse to obey his insane command. Tell the king I will not come. come. What did she say? She said, go tell your stupid master. Enough. So, that's what she said. Yep. yep. That's, that's what, what she, she said. said. I'm not sure how to deal with such insolence. Guards, guards, bring me my royal advisors. <laughs> The king turned to the seven princes of Persia and Media, who were closest to him. So, that's the story, gentlemen. Now, according to the law, what should be done to Queen Vashti for refusing to obey my orders? Go ahead, talk it over. Your Majesty, although your humble servant Haman is unworthy of speaking before your more worthy advisors... Big shot Haman again, always pushing his way ahead of everyone. Uh uh Out of my great love for the king, I must advise him that Vashti is wrong, not only his majesty, but the entire kingdom. This guy's completely off his rocker. Mm -hmm. When women will hear how the queen got away with such disrespect to her husband, all women will also mock their husbands. I can imagine who's the boss in Haman's house. Mm -hmm. If it Mm -hmm. pleases the king, he shall decree that the queen be executed. The king will then crown a new queen who shall never repeat Vashti's foolish ways and let it be decreed throughout the land that from now on all women must honor their husbands. That's the most ridiculous law I've ever heard in my entire life. Ahasuerus would have to be a complete fool to pass such a law. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent idea. I knew it. I knew it. Truly brilliant. The law has now been passed. Messengers, spread the word. Pass the law around to all the lands. Let every man rule his household and speak in the language of his people. Royal executioner, go fetch Vashti and execute the execution. And no excuses. Now, gentlemen, back to more serious business. On with the party! The wicked Vashti was killed, and the king began his search for a new queen. Scouts were sent throughout his kingdom, looking for the most beautiful woman in the entire land. There was a Jewish man in Shushan, the capital, whose name was Mordechai. He had been exiled from Yerushalayim with the captives that had been carried away with King Yechonia of Yehuda by the evil Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. Mordechai had raised his cousin Hadassah, better known as Esther, from childhood, for her father had died before her birth, her mother at her birth. Esther was well known for her beauty and piety. She hoped that she wouldn't be chosen as a candidate for the position of queen. There was nothing worse in her eyes than being forced to marry outside her faith. The fact that the groom was the rush of the king didn't make the idea any more attractive to her. Esther went unnoticed until one day, while she was alone in the house with Mordechai. Esther, could you please close the window shutters? Certainly, Cousin Mordechai. Oh, the streets these days are infested with secret agents for the palace. Whether they will discover you here or not is entirely in the hands of Hashem, but we still must take all the precautions we can. Cousin Mordechai! What's wrong? When I was in the marketplace the other day, I noticed one of the king's guards staring at me. Now he's right in front of our house, speaking to the neighbors. Look, they're pointing in our direction. Cousin Mordechai, I'm afraid. He's starting to come our way. Who's there? Open up in the name of the king. Just one moment. I am Sir Toface. I come to take the girl. Oh, Sir Toface, what a pleasant surprise. Come in. What can I do for you? His Majesty has appointed me to find the maiden most suitable to be the new queen. My men tell me that after coming to this house, I will need search no longer. Oh, you mean Esther here. Well, you know, I feel it quite an honor for you to even consider a member of this household a possible candidate for the queen's throne. But I don't believe that Esther can meet your qualifications. You see, Esther is a mere orphan. Um... 
Uh, she, she was left at my doorstep one wintry morning many years ago, and I accepted to raise her as I would my own child. Ah, I remember it like yesterday. Yesterday, eh? Then why do you think her an orphan if she was abandoned on your doorstep? Ah, uh, yes, 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 yesterday. Yesterday, so long ago. A day so short, a day comes and passes, leaving no footprints. A day today, a day tomorrow, a day yesterday, gone for... Cut the poetry, Rabbi. Esther must come with me. May I at least have a few words with her privately before you take her away? Certainly, Rabbi. I will wait outside. Oh, Cousin Mordechai, this is terrible. Will I have to spend the rest of my life in the king's palace? How will I survive? How long will it take before I start acting like a Persian? Until now, I had you to guide me. Now I'll be away from you, away from all the Jewish people. Cousin Mordechai, I'm all alone. I don't have the strength to make it all alone. Shh, Esther, my child, don't be afraid. I promise you, you won't be left alone. I'll be there in the palace whenever I possibly can. But you must always remember that even when I won't be there, you won't be alone. No matter how bleak things seem to be, Hashem will always be with you, protecting you in those difficult times. Esther, I see troublesome days ahead. Not only for you, but for the whole Jewish nation. Your name, Esther, reveals a message of your own special role in life. The Torah tells us, Hashem says that there will be a time when he will hide his face from us and lead us in disguise. Ever since we went into exile, it's been so much harder to remain close to Hashem. It wasn't always this way, though. It was only 56 years ago when we still had the Beis HaMikdash. I still remember my father taking me as a child to the Beis HaMikdash in Yushalayim. How inspired I was when I watched the Kohanim bringing Karbanas and heard the Levim singing their beautiful songs to Hashem. While standing in the Beis HaMikdash, we actually felt the presence of Hashem. Ah, oh, a lot of things have changed since then. But one thing will never change. Even when all hope seems lost, Hashem will be with us just as before. It may be a bit harder now to feel His presence, but if we try, we can still see His miracles each and every day. I have a strange feeling. I sense that through your merits, a great salvation will be brought not only for you, but for the whole Jewish nation. I can't explain to you exactly why, but you must promise me that you will reveal to no one your true identity as a Jew. I promise you, Cousin Mordechai. Come in. It's getting late. I must take her now. Come. Goodbye. Goodbye, Esther. <laughs> Goodbye, Esther. And never forget, Hashem will always be oh, with you.